Michael Huber from Game Trailers here with the Phantom Pain coming out. We are going to try and go through the Metal Gear lore as quickly as possible. So it's a Tarantino situation. All the Metal Gears are out of order. We begin with Metal Gear Solid 3. Naked Snake's former mentor, the boss, betrays him and leaves him for dead while allying with a renegade Soviet by the name of Volgan. A nuke goes off, he gets injured, left for dead, finally comes back seeking revenge, kills her entire Cobra unit along the way, culminating in a final showdown in a rose bush where she dies, but reveals that she was actually an agent for the United States, attempting to steal Volgan's cash named the Philosopher's Legacy, which were left to him by his parents. The boss's main mission from the US was to be killed by the hands of Naked Snake to prevent an all out war between America and Russia. At the end of the game, Big Boss gets set up by Eva, another double agent. She's working for China or some other country. They aren't happy. She steals all the cash. This guy named Revolver Ocelot has an uneasy alliance with Big Boss. Triple agent, no one knows who the hell he's working for, but he has all the answers. He escapes, moving right along. Naked Snake then earns the title of Big Boss. Very important character. Stay tuned for information. Portable Ops, Big Boss kills a guy named Gene who has a bunch of money. We don't know if this game is filler or canon. Who knows? Kojima doesn't even know. We're gonna move on to Peace Walker. Years later, after the events of Snake Eater, Big Boss is building Mother Base and leading a group of mercenary fighters. He's in Costa Rica and he meets a kid named Chico. They grow attached, they're best buds, and he's trying to protect him and his country. Then this girl comes along by the name of Poss. Very important character, remember this name, Poss. She's actually a double agent working for Cypher. Now we know now that Cypher is actually Major Zero. He's only been featured in the beginning of Metal Gear Solid 3, giving Naked Snake orders, and then he comes back at the very end of Metal Gear Solid 4. We anticipate to learn a lot about him in the Phantom Pain. So Paws and Big Boss end up having a giant showdown at the end of the game. She wants him to join Cypher. He refuses. She decides to launch a nuke at the East Coast. Big Boss is pissed. They prevent the nuke from going off. She gets ejected into the ocean, presumed dead. Cue the events of Ground Zeroes. Phenomenal game, crucial to the lore. Paws and Chico both captured at Camp Omega by a man named Skullface, straight up villain from Batman. Cypher is also involved somehow. Everyone's trying to get information from Poss about the whereabouts of Cypher. Big Boss busts in, does what he does best, gets him out of there, but in route to Mother Base, it's learned that Poss has bombs inside of her. The whole thing was a ruse while Big Boss is away, Skullface's army attacks Mother Base, destroys everyone and everything. There's only a few survivors. Poss ends up sacrificing herself. She had another bomb inside her. The plane blows up. Big Boss enters a coma for nine years. Wakes up at the beginning of the Phantom Pain. We'll leave this section blank for September 1st. So now we get to the first entry in this franchise, the original Metal Gear. Main protagonist, Solid Snake. He's a clone of Big Boss, but he doesn't know it yet. He's tasked with infiltrating Outer Heaven by Big Boss. He's going in there to rescue Gray Fox, who was in there to learn about Metal Gear, this nuclear weapon. Gray Fox went missing, Solid Snake goes after him. End of the game comes, Big Boss is revealed to be the leader. He set up this base as a way to avoid the Patriots. The Patriots have full world control at this time. Outer Heaven was a paradise for Big Boss and his soldiers to avoid any ideologies and just be pure soldiers. There's a big battle, Snake defeats him. Four years pass, retired, Solid Snake gets called back into action, Rambo style, enters Zanzibar land to rescue a kidnapped scientist and destroy yet again another Metal Gear. Long story short, 
Big Boss is actually alive. So is Gray Fox. Solid Snake fights them both. Legendary Brawl on a minefield destroys Gray Fox's body. Then Solid Snake MacGyvers it with an aerosol can and a lighter and torches Big Boss to death. Or so we think. Next is the iconic Metal Gear Solid. The Sons of Big Boss, a renegade mercenary group featuring Revolver Ocelot, led by Liquid Snake, hijack Shadow Moses Island, a military base in Alaska. They threaten to launch nukes if they don't receive Big Boss's corpse. Solid Snake infiltrates the base, takes out everyone in his path, has an intimate showdown with former friend Gray Fox, meets Otacon, an otaku enthusiast. They become lifelong best friends, brawl with Liquid Snake near Metal Gear. Solid Snake defeats him, piece of cake. Before the events of the game, Solid Snake was injected with Fox Dye by Naomi Campbell, a scientist. He's a carrier of this virus. The virus spreads to people and kills them. They just wanted him there to infect Liquid Snake to make sure he died. And anyone in Foxhound, anyone in the vicinity of Solid Snake, this walking chemical weapon would die. Just before the final encounter, Liquid Snake reveals to Solid Snake that they're brothers and clones of their father, Big Boss. But Metal Gear Solid ends with a phone call. Post credits, pre Marvel Cinematic Universe. It's Revolver Ocelot calling the third brother, the third clone, the perfect clone, the President of the United States, Solidus Snake. Ba, ba, ba! So Metal Gear Solid 2 starts with an epic prologue. Solid Snake and Otacon have formed Philanthropy, a two man operation tag team of dreams hell-bent on destroying Metal Gears. They learn about Metal Gear Ray on a United States tanker. Solid Snake infiltrates the tanker in an effort to destroy it. But who the hell decides to show up? Revolver Ocelot and some Russians. There's a showdown and Revolver Ocelot, who now has Liquid Snake's arm attached to his own, gets taken over by Liquid Snake's personality. He escapes with Metal Gear Ray and we jump forward in time. Solid Snake is presumed dead. Q Raiden. <laughs> a mercenary group named Dead Cell along with Revolver Ocelot and some more sketch Russians take over Big Shell. Raiden is sent to infiltrate Big Shell and rescue the President of the United States. So Raiden starts taking out members of Dead Cell one by one. He gets aided by a man named Iroquois Pliskin, who bears a striking resemblance to Solid Snake. Now it turns out the leader of the Sons of Liberty is actually claiming to be Solid Snake. So everyone thinks he's the villain. After taking out more of Dead Cell, thanks to the help of Iroquois Pliskin, Raiden discovers that the actual leader is Solidus Snake, former president and third brother of Solid and Liquid Snake. Metal Gear this whole time was hiding under Big Shell. It breaks loose. There's a giant brawl with multiple Metal Gears. They end up on a rooftop in Manhattan where they proceed to have a sword fight. Solidus and Raiden have a brawl. Solidus Snake, before he dies, reveals that he also wanted to break free of the Patriots' control. Just before the battle, Raiden also learned that Iroquois Pliskin was indeed Solid Snake. The two of them, along with Otacon, vow to finish the Patriots off, finally. Cue the events of Metal Gear Solid 4, the finale, the culmination. Due to Fox die, Solid Snake's age is rapidly increasing. He now bears the moniker of Old Snake called back into action one last time. He goes to Afghanistan to track down Liquid Ocelot and end his reign. After a ton of globe trotting, some epic reunions with Raiden and Naomi, and a nostalgia-filled trip back to Shadow Moses, culminating in a brawl between Metal Gear Ray and Rex, Old Snake finally tracks down Liquid to a giant boat. 
So after crawling through a radiation-filled tunnel to deactivate the Patriots' control over the nanomachines, which control all the soldiers, Solid Snake finally fights Liquid Ocelot in a fist fight for the ages, an emotional roller coaster of highs and lows, a tear-filled fight. Snake finally wins. But at what cost? After a Disney-inspired reunion and wedding with a monkey and drebin and just overall jolliness, Old Snake goes to a graveyard because he knows he's the final weapon. He vows to kill himself. His tortured soul needs to be put to rest. Credits roll. But there's one last surprise from the mastermind Hideo Kojima. Big Boss makes a shocking entrance. The two exchange CQC blows before a loving embrace. Big Boss is there with a lethargic zero in a wheelchair where he reveals to Snake that the Patriots were founded by Zero, Eva, Ocelot, Sigint, Paramedic, and Big Boss himself. Over that time, it splintered into two factions. One led by Zero, one led by Big Boss. Big Boss shuts off Zero's life support system, finally killing him, before finally succumbing to the nanomachines inside of Old Snake, dying peacefully at the boss's grave. Old Snake vows to live the last remaining days of his life in peace with his best friend, Otacon. The end. They look yummy. Sort of like the sun. It's rising again.